Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Youth Intake Challenge. We're currently in our fifth season with Dulwich Hamlet and after a very cloudy and gloomy start to the season with all the troubles over finances linked to the stadium, we're actually having a fantastic season. So stick around and I'll show you where we're at. And welcome back. So lots to unpack this episode, including the new youth intake, which um, is in the email box, but we've not clicked on yet. Um, obviously, we've had the problems with the stadium and the finances, and we've now gone part time because we, we've spent so much money on the stadium. Um, but despite all that, we're having an absolutely fantastic season. Um, we've managed to reel Ebb's fleet in. We've actually overtaken them on goal difference. We've got a significantly better goal difference because um, we're scoring quite a lot of goals this season. However, in the previous game, we got beat by Wilston and they've overtaken us and taken top spot. So in what I thought was hopefully going to be us at the top of the table, we've just slipped down at the last minute and Wilston have beat us. Um, looking at the schedule, we've been fantastic. And I think the big difference from last season to this season is the draws we've just turned into wins. Uh, we've been quite comfortable in a lot of games. There's a, a kind of theme to the, the main scorers. The ones who've probably done the best that I would say uh, that have surprised me is Edward Amayako. He's had a fantastic season. Um, I mean, he's got eight goals in 35. His, his average rating is really significantly higher than I thought it would be, despite him only being at two star and his potential only really peaking out at three and a half stars. So Amayako's had an absolutely fantastic season on the right-hand side. Maybe it's because his players coming in that might take his position. Uh, Dean Spence and Kyle Peterson, fantastic in the middle of the park. Steve Tracy's back from his broken ankle. He's starting to score goals again. So, I mean, 19 games and eight goals isn't a bad return. 12 in 21 all told. But again, his, his average rating, and, and that's what the theme is really, is everybody's playing probably above where they, they would be expected to be. Um, and then Lamar Hams, he's played, I mean, 21 games, 14 goals. Again, for someone who's just come in, he's only 16. But I think because he's got a little bit of pace and he's a bit more physical than some of the other players, he's actually quite effective at this level and he's scoring quite a lot of goals. So, again, he's another one that's doing really well. Um, but what I would say before we go and look at the intake or anything is, is when we look at the squad... Um, that's the first team squad, which I've, I've kind of kept down to a 25-ish man squad to make it a bit more manageable. Um, because we've been recruiting all the players every time from the youth intake, we've got a really big um, squad when we take into account the under-18s. That is a massive squad. And I know some of them are in the youth co contracts and only on £5 a week, but I think now is the time we've got to really start thinning them down. Um, I'm looking at the contracts and the ones who are expiring. March 2029 and I think I'm going to have to make almost like a cut off and say anyone who's not more than three star um, hard yellow potential is probably not going to get a new contract I'm going to let them go and I know it sounds harsh but if we want to continue growing and signing new players as we go up the leagues then we're going to have to make some kind of decision on cutting some of these off because we can't just keep relentlessly signing players and um, we've had loads of offers for players um, along the way we have let few go uh, but they all go for no transfer. So if I just look at the history, I mean, in fact, they're not even showing on there, but they don't get a transfer fee. All the bids that come in are for zero pounds, which isn't good at all. In terms of the finances, we've massively recovered on that huge amount uh, of debt that impacted us when the stadium got bought. I'm hoping that at some point, hopefully next season, we'll go back to being a full-time squad or a, a full-time club. If you look at the projection now, um, we're actually on an upward curve so I think long term maybe we'll be able to um, get him a more positive outlook on where we're going in the future so that's another positive thing and the final thing to look at really which is really important in football managers the dynamics and we are just doing absolutely fantastic we're maxed out on excellent on atmosphere cohesion and managerial support and that means players are playing really well in terms of happiness again we've got one player concerned in the entire squad which is Abu Duru, and he's concerned about his playing time. Well, well, actually, he's not our first choice left back anymore because Cockings has come through. So, I mean, I would argue that Abu Duru probably isn't going to get signed on. He's got one more year with us after this. Um, but Vasilis Drakos is a better player, and he's got five-star potential, as is James Cockings. So, we don't really have a need for Abu Duru. He did his really good last season. 
Um, but with Vasilis Trackers coming through the latest youth intake, we're going to have to let him go. So um, things have been going well, but what's going to happen next is um, we're going to have a look at the youth intake. So I'll always pause it, see where we go, but oh, there it is there. So, oh my word. <laughs> I'm sure, and, and I'm sure it said we weren't getting a good intake. I'm sure it said it was average. But uh, what have we got there? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that six green ones? Yeah, six elite talents. Some of them already two star ability. One, two, three, four, five top talents. Four good talents, and then one decent talent. So um, much better than I expected it to be. Um, surprising against what the preview is. And I, I don't know how much bearing that has on it. And I don't know how much effect our facilities have had yet. So where's our club info facilities? Uh, basic corporate, below average training, basic youth, youth level four. I don't know what the maximum youth level is. If someone lets me know in the comment section, I'm not sure what the maximum that is. But we have got a good academy coach. You know, we've got good youth recruitment. So I don't know if some of them little minor adjustments we've had has helped us improve the intake. I'm, I'm not particularly sure, but that to me seems um, far and above what we were expecting. But let's get into it and have a look. Alex Papali, the first one in the decent talents, attacking midfielder on the left. I mean, you'd have to be a lot better than Jake Gilder to even stand a chance. But he's only got one and a half star potential, so I think... And I know I shouldn't base it entirely on the on the star rating, but I, I just don't think we're going to keep Alexis Papali at all. Uh, he's not particularly quick. He's not good at crossing. He has got a little bit of good t technique and teamwork, but I think in thinning out the squad, I think Alexis Papali has unfortunately been a casualty of timing, and he's not he's not one we're going to sign on. Um, Rico Steele, another midfielder on the left, but he's a flat left, not an attacking midfielder on the left. Gets forward whenever possible, so it's a good little trait to have. Spirited personality, again, not electric pace. He can cross, bit of teamwork, but if he was... He's 195 centimetres tall. Again, I, I think he's another one that's going to be a casualty of the new regime and, and we're not going to sign him on. Um, Michael Freeman, a centre back again. Unless he's, I mean, he's quite short. Doesn't dive into tackles, which is good. But again, I think we'll just we'll let him go. If he had something that jumped out, in, in like incredible stats in the in the tackling, heading, and positioning, I would maybe consider keeping him. But I just think to keep the squad size down, we're going to have to be a bit ruthless this time round. Um, Shamar Lamy, a striker. Again, unless he's electric, which he's not. I mean, he's got a bit of finishing on him. 178 centimetres. Shoots from distance. Attempts overhead kicks, which is uh, quite interesting. So we might keep him for the memes. Um, we'll see. Shamar Lamy, just because I want to see an overhead kick. Uh, John Umbeva, goalkeeper. That's certainly not something we need more of. We've got about two or three really good high five star potential keepers as it is so again John on Beaver we're going to let go moving up into the top talents then so again all of these will keep because they've got a good higher potential threshold Maxwell Ando from Ghana defensive winger again not quite where I would normally want him to play fairly professional again his physical stats don't look great he's not particularly good at crossing I don't know if I'm, I might make the decision not to take him as well, only because he's a natural right midfielder and he doesn't look like he's got the, the stats I want in an attacking midfielder. Um, so <laughs> although this looked like a great um, intake, I'm not over, over, a little bit underwhelmed at the minute. Louis Bren Brathwaite though, left fullback, one and a half star current to four star potential. Good stamina, he's quite short, so tackling, positioning, marking is all right. I prefer him to be a bit quicker, but that might come. Good teamwork. Not the best crossing, but it might grow. So again, we'll, we'll snap him up and we'll let him develop in the youths, in the reserves. But again, he's a little bit underwhelming. 
Uh, Moses Boaki, a right back. Again, always good to have in the squad. Um, let me see. The government is a fullback, so good tackling, good decision making, determined, and he's a leader, which uh, bodes well. Unambitious, doesn't dive into tackles, which is again is another good trait to uh, if we're playing and staying on our feet. So Moses Boak, yeah, I think he's got a little bit of potential to have as a, a future first team right back. So we'll keep Arlind Kasa, a Kosovan central defender. I mean, I'm hoping he's going to be tall and good at tackling and heading. Let's see. 181 centimeters, not bad. Good jumping reach as well with it. Um, tackling and position. I mean, positioning is in the double figures. Tackling not quite there. Good technique. Good aggression. Determining again a leader. So a balanced personality. I think he's a good one to keep. Only 15, so he's got a few years to develop that physical side as well. So again, I think he's looking all right. We need a few centre halves. Tony Jones, defensive midfielder, deep line playmaker. Again, we've had Peterson in recent years, who's fantastic. But let me see, teamwork and visions. Really, I'm taking out my knee looks. He looks the business in terms of a deep line playmaker. Them three stats there, and he's got the passing, so he is looking good. Balanced personality, no traits, only 16, but he's um, he's definitely looking pretty handy for that deep line playmaker position. So that's another good player there. Now into the elite talents of which we've got six. So Stefan Williams, advanced midfielder. We don't really play with one, but I mean, it's straight away his mental stats look pretty good there. He's not got much stamina. He's verging on having some pace. Good technique, teamwork and vision. Could we drop him slightly deeper just to fit the formation? But a good little creative player. And unambitious, but again, we never look in with the personalities. I'll, let somebody let me know if um, if there's a way to improve on the personalities, because I sometimes think we're a little bit hard done by on that on that front. Uh, next, we've got another defensive midfielder, so we're quite midfield heavy this time. Uh, ball winning midfielder, which I like. Asquith Lashley. Teamwork work rate good. Quite good in terms of the, the general spread of physicals. Good aggression, good decision making, not particularly great at marking, but as a ball winner midfielder, all right, and he gets forward when possible, which is a bit from that deep position, might be all right. Okay, it helps us get another player in the box, maybe get some goals. So, Asquith Lashley looking pretty good. Joshua Moses attacking midfielder on the right, so competition for Amoako because he's, oh, I mean, straight away, he's got a little bit of pace. So, Balanced personality, not particularly good at crossing, so it might be more suited to being an inside forward type. Although he's, I mean, first up finishing dribbling, not too bad. Good technique. So yeah, looking right. I've been looking for a few more pacey players to have in the squad. So Joshua Moses, um, he might find himself in the team. He's already at the same current ability as Amoako, so it'll be interesting to see um, how long it is before he gets into the first team. Alex Brozin, another ball winning midfielder in the centre. Um, again, good physical stats. Teamwork, work rate, tackling not quite as high as I would like them to be. Good determination, good aggression, and brave. So, yeah, we'll see how he develops. Again, always do with midfield, especially when we play with three. Uh, Justin Powell, an attacking midfielder on the left, but his natural position is up front. Uh, again, good pace and acceleration. What's his finishing like? Six. So a young striker. Again, we've been doing all right with strikers recently. I seen Oscar Allen left, and it still it still hurts. But <laughs> we've got we've got Spence and we've got Lamar Hams up there, and we've got Justin Powell now to add to that mix. Left footed, a little bit of flair on him, good work rate. So as a pressing forward, he could work quite well. And then the final player, central midfielder from Trimbago the Trimbagonian, is that Trinidad and Tobago? Uh, centre mid Medsala, but his natural position is up front. Not particularly quick. He's down as a young striker. Work rate, technique. Let's just put him in a. So he's a deep line forward they've got him as. Good off the ball, good first touch. Finishing lane leaves a little bit to be desired. And technique 14. So, again, a fairly good uh, spread of a squad. We'll probably sign all of the top talents, all the elite talents, and Mr. Overhead Kick, wherever he is, Shamal Amy, um, but the rest of them will let go. 
in terms of the other players in the squad we're going to let some uh, some of them go as well and we'll see if we can uh, push on and maybe get a league winner what i'll do is i'll play a couple games uh, and i'll just revisit at the end of the season so i won't end the episode there we'll go on and i'll bring you back and just update you where we finish at the end of the season if we are close to winning the league i'll just bring back and show the game just to see if we can secure something otherwise we'll do like last time and we'll probably have a playoff episode so stay tuned and i'll be back shortly well ladies and gents with two games to go we have a chance to wrap up the title and um, we're one point clear two games to go so if we win and they win well it's not necessarily done and um, if we win they lose who wins which well, we have to play the game now but um yeah let's go for it we're playing Bournemouth to a 20th we're gonna go full-on attacking we've got pretty much our strongest team out we are resting a couple of players Jake Gild is sitting out um but yeah we've got a fairly strong team we've been pretty reliable I have been looking through the squad messing out with the squad planner just then I've realized that we've we've used very little in terms of center halves so Atty Enza and Ellsley are pretty threaders they've played a huge bulk of games um, Barwick, who's a central defend, well, central midfielder, he's been used as kind of a a makeshift squad player in that position. But we really need to develop a couple more centre halves to come in in through those positions, and that'll be one of the things um, we look at from the youth team is who are the next best two centre halves and we'll introduce them to the squad and give them some game time because without the game time, they're never going to reach the levels we want them to. As we get an early attack, Spence gets a shot, but can't quite hit the target and i'm hoping if we go all out attack and get the points on the board uh, maybe one of the other teams will make a bit of a mistake and we can go on and win although it looks like wheelstone's already winning uh, you can see ready former former dulwich ready playing against us now but again hopefully we can forge another chance as brathwaite and again a few of the young players yashley there as well making um, a few appearances since they came back and dimitri Addis, who's Stepped in for Gilder due to fitness concerns, has got himself on the score sheet. Amoako again, been a phenomenon this season. McHugh coming in because um, I mean, Wadrago needed a bit of a rest. Ball comes to the back post. Dimitri Edis gets a, a little bit of a sniff and he puts his 1 0 up, which should return us to the top of the table. Um, I don't know why it's showing us a second because we, 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 were, we were a point clear and we're winning, so surely we should be top. Um, I'm sure it's nothing more than a, a slight mistake in the calculations, but we'll we'll keep going. Hopefully that will update as we go along. Um, Ebsley and Wheelstone both winning. There you go. See, we're back at the top of the tree. We really could do a Wheelstone slipping up, but they're 2-0 up. And that Aaron Sasu, he's had a phenomenal season for them. And <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you've got three teams over 90 points, so it's it's been quite the season. And on paper... I don't think I'm in Dimitri Addis has got himself another goal there. The cheek of it coming in as a substitute for Gilder. Uh, and it just shows you how good the, the depth we've got in the squad is. Barwick with a throw to McHugh. A little one-two. Throws in at the back post. And Dimitri Addis with a header up above his man. Makes it 2-0. So um, we'll still make it three. It's going to go to the last game. Um, so we'll, we'll probably have that one chucked on the end as well. Again, can we get any more goals out of this? We've been quite comfortable in the majority of matches. We did have one draw uh, in amongst all these games, which fortunately, Ebsfeet were playing Wheelstone at the time and we didn't lose any ground. But we've managed to just keep our noses in front. And if we're noses in front for the last game, then all we need to do is better everyone else's results and we can hopefully get out of this decision, division at the fifth time of asking. As Dimitri Addis on a hat trick and he gets it in the 40th minute, this time with his right foot from outside the box. Again, he started the move on the left hand side. Spence holds the ball up well, lays it back to him on the middle uh, edge of the box. He takes a couple of touches and takes a little bit of a deflection, but 3 0 up and comfortable. Barring some kind of Bournemouth shenanigans, uh, we should go on and get three points in this game. Um, I mean, again, we're going to have to play that last game because it's so pivotal towards where we are in the season. As as they get a season, Boreham would get a, a penalty with chance to get a goal back just before half time. Chigozi goes the wrong way, and this might give them a glimmer of the hope. So, me and my big mouth and the old <laughs> Bournemouth Luton shenanigans. Um, hopefully, we don't have any kind of collapse like that. As Kilda comes in at centre half. 
um, which again not ideal but when I was looking at the squad we're very very thin on the ground in terms of centre halves I mean Brathwaite's played a couple games at centre half towards the end of some games making a couple of substitute appearances but again for the most part Elsley and Atienz have been fit for the whole season and that's who's been playing the games it's just when they're, they're, they're fit to kind of hang on for the last game of the season because that's what it's going to go down to 40 minutes to go another ball goes into the box and they've got it back to 3-2 oh, shenanigans absolute shenanigans I mean it's a little, little header at the back post just in off the bar uh, what are we going to do here I mean Amoako for Moses bit of fresh legs on the right hand side maybe just open them up and make them think about our press rather than attacking us so 30 minutes to go from what looked like a massively comfortable position we've left ourselves open at the back we've got a center well a left winger playing center half alongside a very tired Elsley another chance of Boreham Wood with 20 minutes to go just goes over the bar it's starting to get a little bit ropey I think we might have to step down to cautious and try and protect the game because I'm getting nervous Gilda with a free kick from the edge of the box deflects wide 15 minutes can we get something from a corner Gilda will deliver not got the big boys up there but 10 minutes to go it's nervy it's tense I don't want to have to go through another set of playoffs Gilda will deliver another corner into the box please somebody get their head on this in it goes it's cleared initially Gilda will get a chance to put it in again McHugh down to Moses in it goes <sighs> Lamar Hams with an opportunity but he can't quite hit the target six minutes to go Boreham Wood now breaking down the left hand side Barwick can hold him up but he can't stop him again they're going to create something here it just goes over the bar and it, this is um, it's too close to call for me at the minute Chagosi playing the ball out Barwick flicks it on but again Boreham Wood Barwick picks it up Gilda playing at the back Moses gives the ball away who we brought on as a sub McEwen breaks through has poked away by Elsley but I thought it was going to be a penalty a keeper's coming up for the attack now they didn't swing the ball into the box which is a surprise good play by Barwick to shut the move down five minutes of injury time Brathwaite down the left hand side delivers it into the box but straight into Ruddy's hands four minutes to go are they going to muster up one we've got the ball back Hams chance to kill it and he's put it in um, it gives me a little bit of a peace of mind I think that's the game over now um, that, that is a lesson to us all that when you're winning a game um, don't tempt fate by suggesting uh, they'll come back from 3-0 down because it might just happen um, but we go 4-2 up not long till the end of the game that should be it now we'll have a look how the other teams got on if Wealdstone or Ebsfleet have dropped off and out of the race it'll go down to the final game of the season as another chance goes blazing over the bar and I mean a good game for the neutral to watch really 4-2 Brathwaite down the left hand side hopefully this just kills it dead Lashley holding the ball deep and that's it over so 4-2 another three points Moses with a good performance on the right Dimitriadis with a good performance on the left Hams again bagging another goal up top so three points is what we wanted three points is what we got I think Ebsfleet are out of it now because three points and 12 goals of goal difference to make up we just need to better Wheelston's result in the final game bear with me I'll click through and I will get us ready so stay tuned it's going to be an absolute blockbuster finish and here we go for the final push uh, the last game of the season away at Hungerford if we win we go up uh, if we lose it might go up and if we draw I mean there's always a chance we just have to beat other results but um, a win sees us go up so uh, the starting lineup we've got Chagosi in goals Cockings, Elsley, Atienza and Bellingham in the back four Peterson, Schaff and Rodrago in the midfield and Gilda, Amoako and Tracy up top unfortunate news following the previous game Craig Howard he's broke his leg he's going to be out for a considerable length of time um, but it's not the first serious injury we've had and we'll manage um, without him we'll just reintegrate him when he comes back but focus is today on beating Hungerford we've been on a good run we've had a fantastic season 
and it all comes down to this this one game really um we've been in the playoffs we've felt that kind of defeat side of it hopefully today we get to see the other side where we see a victory it is just one big final push and um see if we can go over the line we will keep an eye out on the other results as they come through in the the dugout the vidi printer type scenario hopefully um the result's not going to matter it would be brilliant if everybody lost and then it didn't it didn't matter and the pressure was off but i have a feeling we're probably going to have to go on and score some goals in this game so hungerford with the first real chance a real highlight playing out from the back we need to get the ball back and break the other way we've got plenty of players back there and we're not that used to losing, but Amoako on the count, he's giving the ball away very cheaply. Long ball over the top, he's big hands, one of them really long highlights, but who's it going to break to? It looks like it's going to them. They've played the ball through the middle, and we have gone a goal down in 17th minute. Jolliffe breaking through the centre of the back four. I mean, we would rather with a good header there, but we had too many players playing slightly higher up. We are playing with an attacking mentality. Maybe we should drop down to positive, so we still get try and get back into the game, but we don't leave ourselves too open. Um, and see where we go from there. So, so far, um, it looks like we might miss out. Long way to go in the game. Got another 70 minutes. Wadrago breaking forward up the right into Amoako. Can he find a good pass into Wadrago? Plays it through the guild and it's offside. You can see the linesman's got his flag up. Positive in that we're making a couple chances. You can see Wheelstone. They've managed to get, I think it's probably a draw they've got at the minute, which puts ahead of us on goal difference. They've now got a goal ahead, so we're going to have to find a goal. At the minimum, we need to get a point. Um, if we can get a point, that might just creep us ahead of Wheelston, and we don't have to worry about what Ebb's fleet's result is as we approach the 30th minute of the game. Peterson gets the ball back. Wadrago plays over the top to Tracy, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. I thought that touch had taken him away too far, but it was a good finish in the end. It's put us back on level, pegging on the 30th minute. Peterson winning the ball deep in Elsley into Wadrago. First time ball over the top. Tracy looked like he had the better room on terms of pace, but he cuts back, shapes a lovely shot into the far corner. And does that put us back at the top of the tree? I mean, Wilston are winning 1 0. Let's just have a look when the table comes up. I have a, a, a sneaking suspicion that we still need another goal. Gilder breaking into the box, finds Cockins at the edge, into Schaff. And doesn't quite hit the target, but we'll get a corner. Tracy will deliver it. In it goes, nobody initially getting onto it. Bellingham will recycle it back into Peterson with a shot from the edge of the box, but doesn't hit the target. Blocked by a body of players. Gilder this time with a free kick over the top. Schaff picks up the pieces. Cockings at the edge of the box, but again, he's missed the target. Final five minutes of the first half. We're a point clear at the top of the table. LZ now playing it forward. We're giving the ball away. Opening up a chance for Hungerford. Good winning by Guildford in the middle of the pitch. Amoaku down the right now. Has he got the pace to get past his man? No, he comes back. Again, I'm never too sure we're playing it that deep. We've not got many quick players. But ball goes over the top. Tracy's on it again. First time shot. Bit wayward, but it would have been spectacular if he'd hit the target. Tracy to deliver in a corner just before half time, and in it goes. Again, we can't quite make that second breakthrough. Bellingham back to Tracy. It's offside, but I think we need another goal just to make this certain. Half time, we're doing all right. We're in the ascendancy. Stepping back from the attacker mentality down to positive has had a, a really good effect on the team. Now we've got 45 minutes to try and. Just nick a second goal, get our noses in front and make this make this certain Hungerford breaking forward this time though. We have got players over to try and track him back. We've halted their progress a little bit. But they get a shot from the edge of the box, Chigozi tips it wide. And they will get a corner though. What will their delivery be like? And can we get it away? They've taken a short one. You don't often see many short corners. Initially cleared, putting some pressure on, but they get another chance to deliver. We've got it clear again. Pressure kind of building from Hungerford at the minute. Not seen a league table in a while pop in the dugout. Do we go attacking? Do we take the gamble? I think last 30 minutes it might be worth making that. Gilder plays the ball through to Wadrago. It's a penalty. We've got a penalty opportunity. If this goes in, we won't go attacking. 
Gilder taking a penalty, puts it in the bottom corner, puts his 2-1 up. As it currently stands, Dulwich Hamlet are moving up a division. We will be going to the, the National League. Great little penalty. Gilder had been there since the start, came back after a broken leg, re-established himself as a star player within the team, and he's, he's the man to get the goal to put us in front as it currently stands. So 25 minutes to go. Semi good performance. Um, we went behind. We managed to pull back and take the lead. Tracy with a free kick from the edge of the box. Now a bit wayward. Um, again, we'll just waste some time if we can. Amoaku not having the best of games on the right hand side, but club captain. So we'll leave him on there as long as we possibly can. Into the final eight minutes. Atienza is tied for Barwick. We will make the change because I don't want anyone to catch him out on tired legs. Gilda playing the ball to Wadrago. Can he get the ball back to somebody? Into the box to Schaff. He has a chance, but it's cleared. Bellingham plays it into Peterson. Schaff might get another chance. Cockings plays it over. Tracy gets it in to make it 3-1. We have a two-goal cushion with five goals to go. Dulwich Hamlet. One, one foot through the door to the promotion. Great recycling by the ball after the initial, initial cross was cleared. Tracy in there, putting his head where it hurts. Getting in the top corner. And um, Dulwich Hamlet will be going up a division. Four minutes to go. Dominant performance. I mean, bar them scoring a goal, probably against what their XG is saying. Well, we've done terrific to come back into this game. So the corner goes in, header goes over the bar. I would panic again like the previous game if they'd got another one back in. But we've got two minutes to see this out now. And after five seasons... Dulwich are getting out of the division. We're going to make some progress despite all the financial difficulties. We're going to have a new stadium as well. So a massive positive ending to the season. Tracy with two goals, Gilder with one. Everyone enjoy the celebrations. Hopefully we go back to professional again. And as it, I mean, as it turns out, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, where's the Wheelstone result? Wheelstone got beat. And where's the Ebbsfleet game? Are they in here somewhere? Must be in here somewhere. I can't see. Ebbsfleet got beat. So both of them got beat. I was all that panic about nothing. But there you go. Delitz have been promoted. We are the champions. Initial budgets don't really matter. Um, I'll do all the press conference and stuff off camera. So once again, thanks for watching. We've got the elation of going up a division. Next episode will be the end of season review, the transfer window, and our first match in the... Uh, in the new division uh, so once again thanks for watching hopefully you've enjoyed it five seasons of um of very good development of youth players uh, one season of uh, financial turmoil and losing uh, one of our best strikers uh, and um, we somehow managed to get over the line and get promoted so uh, terrific massive things to look forward to and until next time have fun take care and i'll see you soon